Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch live stream audience to their preferred destination providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts which they earn by watching. We begin with a mission that I launched in the previous video and left in orbit pending its transfer to Jupiter and now we are handling that transfer to Jupiter. It is a large ship with uh, crew accommodations as well as supplies and we are sending it to Jupiter using four very large nuclear engines. To launch such a huge thing to lower orbit, nearly 3,000 tons, of course we used the Monument Launcher. It was severe overkill, but I wanted to fly the Monument Launcher. And we are able to send more than 1,200 tons over to Jupiter. As you can see here, it's periapsis forming. And, you know, it's good to have an overabundance of supplies available at Jupiter. We found that out with these missions. This is already around Jupiter. This is the Jupiter station. Now helping out NV Silence who wanted to go to Europa. NV Silence's own vehicle didn't have enough Delta V to get to Europa on its own. So this is rendezvousing with NV Silence in order to bring him over to Europa orbit. And so we have our encounter there. And we will still need to do a pretty hefty burn to match speeds. This is a supply vessel also in Jupiter orbit that will go to Europa orbit and be able to resupply and be silenced as necessary. So that also gets its encounter, but because it's ion engines, we might need a few burns to actually get into Europa orbit. All this stuff being done with ion engines over here right now. And this here is the rendezvous of the Jupiter station with Envy Silence's vessel, the Jupiter Wet Workshop. And as you can see, it's more than 2,000 meters per second, very hefty. And because, again, it's ion engines, we have to go around. It turns out that the first approach didn't work out, so we have to replot and get the rendezvous on a second orbit. But we do manage it. And here it is approaching Envy Silence's Jupiter Wet Workshop. They're both large vehicles but the Jupiter wet workshop is much larger than this as we'll see when it docks. Just a reminder the Jupiter wet workshop is a converted SLS core stage with the hydrogen tank still used for hydrogen to fuel a nuclear thermal rocket engine but the oxygen tank converted for crew quarters and right now only one crew member on there. So it's a large crew accommodation but the downside is it's very heavy, and so it ran out of Delta V much faster than, the, than this smaller Jupiter station will. And here we are docking, you can see the comparative size of the two. Basically the Jupiter station has a 4 meter diameter, uh, not unusual for stations, but the SLS wet workshop has an 8.4 meter diameter. And here we have Emmy Silence heading out, this uh, pass-through system thing for the wet workshop so the Kerbals can actually float around inside but the Jupiter station is just uh, USI modules and so they don't have that so we have to actually EVA out to it and then go in through that airlock which is a normal style Kerbal space program airlock so board and then separate the Jupiter station. It's not really a station, of course. Uh, it's not very stationary, but that's what we call it. And there's plenty of supplies for Envy Science there right now. With so much food, water, and oxygen with Envy Science, I don't know if it was a great idea to also have the supply vessel uh, head over to Europa. But yeah, because it might be better to keep it in a high orbit to rendezvous with other things, but that is what we were doing just as a precaution. There's no telling how long Envy Science might be hanging out around Jupiter. So we have our Europa encounter, finally. Well, we had plenty of Europa encounters, but this is the final Europa encounter for MV Silence. He will be able to make orbit. Unfortunately, you'll note our periapsis is negative. We are currently crashing into Europa. Uh, I was a little bit too accurate, I guess you could say, in a weird way. But unlike the time in the previous video where we had to actually revert in order to avoid killing MV Silence, uh, this, that's not a problem in this case. This is a smaller vessel with a lot of ion engine power, well, you know, uh, you know, two kilonewtons, so that's a lot of ion engine power, and it's got a nuclear reactor powering the ion engines. Uh, so we can manage it because it's smaller, and also I threw in the RCS thrust, even though that meant that we couldn't do full-time warp while using those, but the RCS helped to ensure that we would have a positive periapsis, which we hit right there, and it is all safe. So, 
enemy silence doing the final bit of capture around Europa. This side of Europa looking okay. As we get closer, it doesn't look quite as spiffy. But yeah, we don't have like procedural terrain generation like all the fancy games have these days. And there is the capture. So, all right, Envy Silence has gotten his wish. Uh, what Envy Silence paid for, did not pay for a landing, mind you. And we get a few screenshots here. Uh, though I still had the, the little tag for the music credit up there. My own screenshotting would not have that tag up there. That's added by OBS Studio after the fact. So, yeah. Anyway, I got a few screenshots. And we continued with getting the supply vessel over to Europa, but it won't immediately arrive. There's a lot to do with it. But with this, we'll turn away from all this activity around Jupiter and go to Mars, where we have a little tug that is trying to capture into orbit around Mars. The good thing about the tug is that it's got a lot of Delta V, as you can see in the bottom left there, 18,000 or so. And that's thanks to the RTG engines, the candle engines, which basically shove hydrazine through an RTG or around an RTG, I don't know how you want to put it, but the point is it, uh, the RTG heats the hydrazine up and shoots it out at a decent efficiency, not nuclear thermal propulsion efficiency, but decent efficiency. And we are just capturing that into orbit. Unfortunately, I didn't aim low enough, but in this case, we don't have to redo anything because even if the Error braking doesn't capture us, it can capture itself to be sure. And so here the little candle engines activate. They don't produce a whole lot of thrust though, and they have a 2 hour and 22 minute burn time. After all, it was meant as a tug, so... Yeah. Yeah, we are taking quite a long time to capture, but we do manage to capture in the end. It was very tedious, as so many things are, <laughs> but uh, yep. That is all good. Actually, without the inflatable heat shield, it had much more Delta V than initially indicated. This is a supply pod and bring food, water, and oxygen. And the experience with the previous mission, of course, helped us assess what kind of periapsis we needed, but it still wasn't enough. Actually, I had to redo this one. I loaded up a quick save in order to bring the periapsis even lower because I was totally not expecting that it needed to be that low considering it had the inflatable heat shield and everything, and that increases the surface area quite a lot. So, yep, that was unexpected, but we got it into orbit safely, and it is ready to go. Of course, we have to boost up its periapsis so it doesn't hit the atmosphere again, but it'll be ready to resupply anything that needs supplies. And then we turn to Saturn, or at least a mission uh, approaching Saturn. This is Arthur E. King and Katak's long-range mission. After their extravaganza around Mercury, they are finally approaching Saturn now. And this is the capture plot taking 700 meters per second after the initial correction when they entered Saturn SOI. And their goal is to land on Titan, so that's going to be interesting. We won't actually do the landing in this video, that will be in a subsequent video. Uh, so this again is the Jupiter supply ship and it is plotted for Europa and this time it will capture. So, we'll have more supplies than we need for MB Silence, but there will be other arrivals. We have launched a Ganymede lander, so... And it's not actually that much Delta V to transfer from Europa to Ganymede, so... That'll be fine. So, the supply vessel captures around Europa for now, not at all in the same plane as MB Silence, but since it has so much Delta V, that's not going to be a problem to correct if we need to. Alright, so there it is around Europa and a scarred surface. Hopefully someday we'll get better images of Europa, NASA, we're looking at you. So, but there it is for now. And next up, we have Arthur E. King and Katak getting into orbit around Saturn, right in the midst of the rings, as it were. And so I got a few nice shots of this huge vessel with its rotating section. That's from USI as well. I do like the USI modules, even though I've created my own station modules, I still like the USI modules. They are very functional, and especially this rotating thing. It's inflatable, so it's easy to pack. And so we are capturing, this is with the Attila Thruster, which is an augmented arc jet from KSB Interstellar, so 
somewhat more advanced than those pesky ion engines. But we can't do full time warp during the augmented arc jet burns, so that is a downside. But there I'm trying to get a nice plot to Titan, but I realize that we need multiple burns because we're in a very different plane. And so we're going to boost up, do inclination correction, and then pull it down at the end. Then there's the boost up part that we can do uh, immediately because we didn't have anything else pending. We do have the Kerbal alarm clock and all the things that we need to pay attention to. So, speaking of which, Uranus. Uh, we visited everything, uh, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, now we're on Uranus. And this is a supply vessel for Miko Gagozov, who is going to be arriving at Uranus. We've got the supply vessels arriving first, and Miko will arrive to meet up with them and must get to them, because otherwise he will run out of supplies very quickly after arriving at Uranus. But here it is capturing, and takes a while on that. We pass right by Uranus. Uh, with the ion engines this often happens. I pass right by periapsis and we continually have to capture and of course at apoapsis we'll have to boost back up because when you do pass periapsis ultimately your periapsis starts to go down if you just go straight retrograde so this is the boost up to make sure it doesn't hit Uranus and it is safe waiting for Mitko to access it. So, back to Arthur's vessel around Saturn and additional burns to meet up with Titan. I like featuring this thing. It not only does it have the spinning section, but also all the fuel tanks, the array of spherical fuel tanks that we have down the center of it. Uh, those are actually made by B. They are a set of five spherical fuel tanks around a tube. And so each uh, five tank segment is just one part. So it's a fairly low part count situation, but it looks nice. So at this point, we've corrected the inclination and we're just trying to get into phase with Titan. But in the midst of all that, we have to resupply our Lunar Gateway. And so we are launching this Soyuz-style rocket with RD-170s on each of the boosters and the core. And then a hydrogen-oxygen upper stage. So it is launching out of Cape Canaveral, because why not? Of course, we've done a whole lot of Lunar Gateway resupplies. I do try to change up the rocket a little bit each time, but it's fairly predictable that we can get the load to the moon properly. And we're using basically the same HTV-derived vessel with AJ-10-190s that we normally do. And here we ignite the RD-57M that we are using for our transfer engine. And we've used many times for our transfer engine, and you'll note that when we make orbit around Earth, we end up with about the right delta V to get over to the moon. Uh, we do take some time to burn with this engine. It's not that powerful. It's 400 kilonewtons or so. So it's not like a J2 or anything, but it's good enough. And then the AJ-10-190s to finish off the transfer and then capturing around the moon. The HTV does have a great capacity and we've added to that capacity with an additional segment, of course, and a uh, much more powerful service module, but in general it's a very capable vehicle and probably my favorite of the ISS supply vehicles, especially considering how often I use it here. So we are approaching Lunar Gateway. We already removed the previous supply vessel and so we're just taking up the same slot here, uh, scooching in. That's just a motley assemblage of various things really at this point. And here we are docked. All right, next up we had to turn to the Ganymede lander, you can see the alarm there, and uh, this was doing a minor correction on its way into Jupiter periapsis, and so this would ensure that it would have a good periapsis to capture with, and there you can see the capture burn is only going to be 400 meters per second, but the trick is going to be getting to Ganymede itself, but we did have quite a lot of delta V there. so. This is the final burn for Arthur e. King and Katak to get their Titan encounter. And again with the augmented arc jet. So they seem to have a fair amount of Delta V left uh, after this burn, more than 7,000 meters per second. So they are basically all set for now. And this is the encounter forming up. So as that appears and we will see them at Titan in the next video. 
I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.